Alright everybody, let's talk about a new franchise. Just finished up the Prom Night movies, and now let's start the oldest franchise I've ever done so far, and that is The Fly, which came out in 1958. And then there was two sequels, The Return of The Fly. I got it all right here. I got the Scream Factory thing, and since it's green, it's probably gonna not show up well in here. But we got, you know, The Fly. We got The Fly 2 called Return of the Fly. We got The Curse of the Fly. The Curse, yeah, The Curse of the Fly. And then you got the Cronenberg movie and the sequel to his movie. I don't think Cronenberg did that one. What? Who did? Who did The Fly Two? Chris Wallace. Wallace by uh, Mick Garris. I've never seen any of these before, so this is going to be fun. This is going to be a first time viewing for all of these movies, and I'm, I look forward to watching them. So yeah, I just saw the original Fly, the sci-fi horror, Vincent Price classic for the first time. And what are my thoughts? Well, before we go into them, let's go over a quick plot synopsis. When scientist Andre tests his matter transporter on himself, an errant housefly makes its way into the transportation chamber, and things go horribly wrong. So let's go over my likes for the movie. Uh, the things I really like about this movie is having Vincent Price in here, a horror legend who's done dozens and dozens of movies, all the way up until the 80s and maybe even the 90s. He did a lot of films, and... So I, th I, th I like seeing him here. He's one of the best actors in the movie. Um, you know, there's some wonky acting here. You know, there's a kid actor who's terrible. But I like having Vincent, Vincent Price in here. Um, it's always nice to see him. I think it's well shot. I think that it has some really good cinematography. I watched the color version. I think it was in black and white, but what I watched was in color. Um, Judging by the picture on the back, it was black and white. So, but yeah, I watched it in color. It looks good. I think the music is all right. It's very of the time. I feel like music back then all sounded the same. I will say the visual effects are pretty good for 1958. Like the visual effects of like the the chamber when it lights up, uh, green or you know, was it pink or something. And then you got the green and blue neon lights. I like the way the whole like system looks, the way it operates. But the effects there in that scene, every time they use it, it looks like something that you would still see in like the 80s. And I will say for an older film, I was expecting this this to be like a snail's pace, but it was actually flying by story-wise. There was always something happening, and I liked it. It actually had a good pace, and I liked the ending because it surprised me. It was not like a typical happy ending. It was dark, but also happy. Like what just happened towards the end was terrifying if you put yourself in those shoes and dark and just fucked up but then right after that everything is like they act all happy and cheery the music is happy the family seems happy it's like did you not just witness what the hell just happened i don't know it's just a really odd ending but i like it and i like that i like the way this movie is told narrative the narrative is like one of those movies where it's like a retelling it starts like close to the end and then a character will explain what led up to that and I like that kind of storytelling it's always interesting and it starts it piques your curiosity from the opening so I like that uh, Madame as for my negatives uh, the kid actor in this movie is horrible and you know I'm Cut him some slack because he's a kid, but come on. If they didn't try to find a better kid actor, I mean, this was not just bad acting. This was horrible, the, the line delivery from this kid. And they gave him just too many lines. And, the, you know, the the effects aren't Asian. This movie doesn't age well. I mean, that's not shocking. It's 1958. But when you see the fly, the way it looks... It just makes me laugh. It's supposed to be terrifying, the way the music plays over it, the way the character screams, and I like that like POV of the fly shot. It's just, it comes off as silly to me. It's not terrifying. This movie's not suspenseful to me. It's not scary. It's very of the time. Like, I guess this shit was scary in the 50s. I would be curious if anybody back then actually went to this movie and was like, oh my god, that was terrifying. Maybe the concept on paper is terrifying, if you were in this situation, yeah, that would be terrifying. And there was a couple of, like, cringy moments of, you know, dialogue. Some of the dialogue was not that good. Um, and I just feel like this movie was missing some emotion. Like, there's not enough emotion in the movie. Like, things should be a lot more 
devastating to these characters. There's no like tears being shed. And it's just mostly them being happy when they shouldn't be. It's like a family being broken apart, but you don't really feel that at all. It just seems like she's okay with what happened. I don't know, like there should be a there should be a lot more emotion in this movie with the story they're going for. But final thoughts, I think this is actually it's a good movie. It's well shot, it's well paced, it's very of its time. The visual effects actually are good for a 1958 movie. Um, the story, I like the way it was told, but it's just not a very rewatchable movie to me. It wasn't like overly entertaining. The effects of the fly don't age well. The movie overall doesn't really age well. It's just not something I see myself wanting to watch again. It's more of a one and done for me. But it's definitely a well made. It's well made enough that I can recommend checking it out. It's a classic. I can see why it's a classic. So when it comes to the fly, definitely worth seeking out at least once. Check it out. See if you like it. Stream it. Borrow it from a friend or rent it at Redbox. So the movie opens up with this woman killing her husband, <clears throat> and she kills him by squishing him at this factory, kind of like the Terminator just gets squished and. She won't tell the police why she killed her husband, but she's turning herself in basically right away. Like, yep, I did it. And we find out that the, her husband, uh, he, his brother is Vincent Price. And like I said earlier about emotion, there's no emotion from Vincent Price other than confusion. He's more confused as to what's going on rather than sad. Like, he never really has that moment where he's like, oh, I just lost my brother and cries about her. There's no, like, grief in this whole movie. <laughs> like, the kid never cries when he finds out what happened to his dad because he's a terrible kid actor. The wife never really sheds a tear. Like, when it comes to that moment towards the end and she has to hit the button, she barely hesitates. She, he's just like, you know, push the button. And she's like, okay, we'll do... Pushes it. Squish. Like, there's, like, there's no real emotion in the movie. And I read a review where it's like, this movie's rich in emotion. It's almost void of it, if you ask me. It's more happy. Like, it's, it's very bright and happy at the end. It's just a, it, that's weird <laughs> because of what happens at the end with the spire and everything. Like, it's a dark ending, and, you know, their father and husband just died, and then they just walk off with Vincent Price and basically alluding to the fact that he's going to be the new husband and he's going to start banging his her his brother's wife, who he's always had a crush on. Um, but yeah, so she won't say to the police why she killed her husband. And I guess things were just different back then. Because if this movie was made today, they would take her into the police station for questioning right away. I mean, she gave them a full-on confession. Like, yep, I did it. Yeah, I did it. I, I even called this guy, Vincent Price, told him. I told everybody. I mean, if this movie was made today, the, it would be the equivalent of her just going on Twitter. Like, yeah, I just fucking squished my husband. She's telling everybody. And she doesn't get arrested. They know they don't take her in. They just let her sleep in, in her king size bed for a whole nother day, just taking her time investigating. It's ridiculous because she could be a flight risk. Like she just admitted to murder and now she could flee if she wants to. You're not there's not like a guard on standby outside her door or outside her house in the car in case she tries to leave. There's they're handing her metal utensils to eat with. I mean she could take that shit I mean, they think she's crazy. She murdered her husband, right? She could take those metal utensils, that fork, that butter knife, and kill the nurse that's in her room, like in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Like, they're not thinking at all. It's just like, yeah, this person might be crazy, but fuck it. Let's just let her sleep here unsupervised. Just give her forks, give her knives that she could kill us with when we're not looking. It's just ridiculous. And then she mentions the fact that if she gets arrested, she might get hanged. Do they hang people still? When did that stop being a thing? I didn't look it up. I was supposed to. I didn't. I was curious. I guess people were still being hung in 1958 for killing people. I didn't know that was actually still around. Um, and then they talk about how flies only live a month or so. I'm guessing that's true, but I always heard that they only live like a week or two. I guess I was wrong in that assumption. And, you know, the nurse kills the fly and she starts like losing it, which I thought was kind of funny. Just like how over the top she gets, you know, there's some over the top moments in this movie, but that's just fifties and sixties style acting. You know, everybody was more theatrical back then, a little bit more hammy. Like the guy who's, who finds the body in the opening 
how wide his eyes get was just ridiculous. It made me laugh. Like he just, <gasps> and then like, you know, they do that thing where they're about to scream and it cuts to something else that's louder, like a telephone ringing. That's something they did. Even later on in the 80s movies, 90 that always happens. It's been a thing since 1958. And so this guy, really, you're going to test this thing on your cat, your own cat, Come on, like you could have tested any other animal, you could have found anything else outside, you could have fucking caught a squirrel, you could have found a stray cat, you had to test it on your own cat, you're that confident in yourself, buddy, that's just ridiculous. And then, again, like, he's like, I'm going to start testing humans, who's the first human I should do? Me, I'm going to do it on me, even though it's been fucking up again and again and again, putting things backwards, like, Jesus Christ, you're going to test yourself first? And how did that fly get down there at all? He's got that place locked and sealed at all times. The wife is always talking about how he's down there 24-7, locked doors. Like, the door upstairs is locked all the time. The door downstairs, the, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre sliding doors, always locked. And somehow this fly got down the basement steps and then through that sliding door and in his little thing, chamber, without him noticing. I call bullshit. And another thing I have to question here is okay i mean it's whatever but i still have to question it so right away when this failed experiment happens and he is like almost half fly and half human with a fly head and a fly arm but yet the fly that, that they're constantly looking for is completely fly just 100 percent fly doesn't have a human head human arm nothing just 100 percent fly Every time they cut to it, they show close-ups of it. It just looks like a fly with a white head, but it always had a white head. It's not because our main character's white. It's nothing to do with that. This fly always looks that way, and it doesn't look part human. How come it's taken so long for that to start growing a human head and shit? And his was instantaneously. He got the fly head right away. Just something I have to question, and I'm sure that's in the sequels too, maybe. Um, yeah, you know, we get the thing where it says made in Japan backwards, and I was thinking that when they sent the cat in, that the cat was going to be, like, inside out. Like, it was going to, like, make the cat backwards somehow. I don't know. I thought they were going to do something, like, fucked up. But I guess they couldn't do that in 1958. And so, yeah, at the end of the movie, we, you know, we find out that he died that way specifically because he wanted to destroy the evidence that he was ever a fly. But I'm thinking, wouldn't you still know, looking at that body, the coroner's, like, when you see a squashed fly head, it still looks like a squashed fly head. It's not going to look like a human head. They're going to be like, what the fuck's up with this? Like, even the arm, it's not going to look human at all. I'm sure the coroner would be like, something's off with this body. They're still going to find out. So then we get the scene where they're trying to f find the fly, and it's, like, at the window, and there's, like, a hole in the bottom of the window that they never knew about before and never patched up. Uh... Why not just put your hand over the hole? Like, it's like hovering above it for a while, like a good while. At any moment, they could have just been like, okay, well, you just hold your hand over the hole. Now it has zero escape, chance of escape. And, and, like, she goes around the house to go, like, put the net on the other side. And then she, like, hesitates like an idiot. It's like you could have just immediately put the net over it or your hand, and it would have been fine. You could have caught that fly right then and there. Movie over. Nope. <laughs> it's like... They're being idiots. You blew it! I feel bad for the cleaning lady, the, the housemaid. She, like, gets something out of the fridge, and she's, like, just pouring shit all over. She's spilling everything and then just leaves a mess. At the end of the day, it's, like, the end of her shift. She's probably about to go to bed. Now the maid has to clean up your shit because you can't simply pour a glass of milk without spilling it everywhere, you clumsy idiot. Yeah, I, I just felt, I felt really bad for the maid there. And I thought it would have been really funny if when he goes in that machine with the towel, if he would have been like half towel, because he's got like the towel on his head. It would, it would have been really funny if he went out on the other end and was like half towel, half human, half fly. So I guess it would have been like a third ish. You know, he could have been like tally, you know, you're a towel. It, that would have been funny. So that was a missed opportunity. So then we get this moment that I guess is supposed to be like the terrifying moment of the movie or kind of creepy. Um, it kind of reminded me of the end of Friday the 13th um, during the final chase when Pamela in the distance is acting like she's chasing, help me! That's what it reminded me of, but this one made me laugh because that's actually creepy in that movie. In this one, it was hysterical. So he's on the bench and then next to the bench is this giant fake looking web and this fake looking spire. 
and the fly is in the web and it's like help me it's like this little small squeaky voice yelling help me and they like have like this close-up shot of it <laughs> of the fly i thought that shit was funny and then but terrifying once they get like in his like pov of like the spire getting closer and closer to him terrifying like oh my god i'm that's a huge spider. I'm I don't I do not like spiders. So yeah, he almost gets eaten by a spider, only to get killed by the cop who takes this big rock that was nearby, and squishes both of them instead of just simply fucking flicking the spider away. He could have just poom, knocked the the not 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 the fly the spider. He could have hit the spider away from the fly, you know. But he's like no. <laughs> Killing both of them. Two birds, one stone. Or, you know, fly and spider, one stone. Like, really? So then, that, I mean, I get why, narrative-wise, why this has to happen. So that the wife can be free now. So, because he killed the fly, Vincent Price makes the point, like, oh, well, you, you're charging her for murder, for killing something that was half fly, half human. You just did the same thing, half fly, half human. You're a hypocrite if you arrest her. You gotta go make things right. So then the wife is let go. No charges even though she clearly admitted to her guilt to everybody. And, but yeah, so and then it's like a happy ending. Like, this crazy shit just happened. Her husband, this kid's father, dead. And then it just cuts to maybe like a day or two later. I don't know when. And the kid's like, oh, so daddy's dead? Daddy's never going to come home? Cool. Like, like, no tears shed. Just totally understands the concept of death now. Not scared. Nope. No grief. Nothing. Just like, okay dad's dead and then the wife is basically going to start banging vincent price i assume at, you know because he always said in the beginning that he always had a crush on her so it's like a happy ending he gets his brother's wife that he always wanted now <laughs> and they just they like literally walk into the sunset happy music it's in the credits roll the end that was just a very weird ending so but i like that so yeah and that's in the movie. I don't really have a favorite character in this movie, or a least favorite character, so, yeah. Uh, but the best scene in this movie, the Clapper War, will go to when the dad gets killed by the spider, or be, he was gonna get killed by the spider, but the cop killed him. That was a good scene. And then the Funny Bone Award for funniest moment in this movie is, help me! All that stuff. That was, that cracked me up. And so, yeah, there you go. Those are my thoughts on the original The Fly. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed you.